Guys, so I've rubbed the uh, filler down on the front there. I didn't do any filming of that. And I've just brought it around the back here on a palette just to do some uh, undercoating. So etch primer. Etch primer sort of brings up all of the imperfections that you can't often see when you're doing the uh, um, sanding. You can see there's a bit of a dent there as well. It's basically a pretty beaten up uh, bonnet, to be honest. Um, so I'm not going to put too much time and effort into trying straightening it out completely. It's got that little raise on the on the left hand side there. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of uh, undercoat, maybe rub it down, and then I'll just put some top coat on. And I will be happy when it's done. Okay, guys, so I masked it up at the front here and used a bit of cardboard along the edge just to get the edges. So the compressor isn't working that well. Um, but... Uh, not looking too bad so I'm going to flip the bonnet over now and paint the top side. Okay so just got the first coat on it's not looking too bad as I say the compressor is a bit of a nightmare I did clean it out but uh, but it hasn't ripped well it helped a little bit obviously because it wasn't working at all when I got it out but um, it's as I say pretty rough and ready but that's the first coat I reckon I'll put two coats on and then let it dry and put it on the car. I just need to get this done now. It's got quite a nice shine to it actually. Okay guys, just bad. did the second and final coat. Um, it's not looking too bad actually. It's quite shiny, which is the main thing. Um, not a perfect job by any means, but uh, I'm gonna just drag that inside now and let that dry. I thought of painting the little hooks, which the, hold the, you know, which secure the straps uh, to the um, to the bonnet, but I actually uh, saw that they're galvanized, so I just gave them a clean up on the on the wire brush rather than paint them. I think that looked nicer. I also gave, also gave the uh, the hinges a bit of a, a clean up on the wire brush, but um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put all my stuff away and go home. So I will see you on the next video when I actually fit this to the Land Rover. See you later. Okay, so it's a beautiful day today in Dresden, up at work. So I dragged the uh, bonnet out of the uh, garage just, to, just so I can get some sun and dry off. So I can't see the video screen at all, so I can't tell you what you're seeing. But um, yeah, it's still a bit tacky, um, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it out here until the end of the day. Okay, so because the bonnet um is slightly bent and sits slightly proud on the left hand side what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make up a little template to go underneath there like a what well, just like a, a spacer if you like uh, just to go underneath um the hinge just to drop that side down a bit so i think it'll be relatively unobtrusive that's about three millimeters and um yeah, I'm going to make it up and see what it looks okay, like. When so it's done. that didn't take long at all, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And um, that fits on there like that. And lines up, you'll have to take my word for it, lines up with all the holes. And uh, then we'll act as a, as a gap, hopefully, or, or a spacer, I should say. It won't be too obtrusive. And um, yeah, once the bonnet's dried and I've got it all back together, I'm going to fit this and see what it looks like. Okay guys, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome back to the video for the bonnet. So um, the job for today is having painted this, uh, I think last week I did that, um, I need to get all the accessories fitted and then I'm gonna turn the car around and I'm gonna put it on the car. So I'm gonna do some time lapse uh, while I put everything on here because it's a bit slow going. Um, but then when I put it on the car, I'll do that in real time. The other thing I've got to look at today is this bracket. So I don't know if you can see that there, but this bracket is, that's very, you can bend that very easily because there's a split there, which somebody has previously um, tried to repair with a very <laughs> horrible bit of welding. So I've got a welder here. So what I'll do is I'll clean it up and put a spot of weld on there. Um, but I think in reality, because the way this military version works, or this securing mount works, is, is not great to be honest. I can never pull the straps tight enough um, so that they stay there. Basically what I mean by that is when I go for a drive they start getting loose 
and then this, this hook on the front starts rattling and is very noisy. So, one of my subscribers, George, you offered uh, a while ago for the um, civilian style uh, connector or, or fixing mount for the spare wheel. So, I said no at the time, but knowing that I had this, but this isn't ideal. So, if the offer's still there, George, I'd love to take you up on it because I think the uh, I don't think this is going to really cut it. Um, so maybe we can get in touch. But um, yeah, that's what the plan is. And once I've welded that, I'll get a bit, give it a bit of paint, and then we can get started. So uh, you might remember me making up this plate here uh, during the week. Uh, I'm doing that because this side of the bonnet is, sits too high and I can't really uh, bend it much further down without deforming the bonnet. So I'm going to try this spacer uh, to see if that works. Obviously, if it doesn't work, then I will uh, take it out. Okay, so that's got all the main parts on. I only need now to fit that. I'm wondering actually, rather than going through all the bother of welding that, that I just put it back how it is. That'd be a darn sight quicker. And hope and pray that George still has that uh, fitting. Okay, so that is all of the parts back onto the, to the bonnet. So I'm going to pull out the car now, turn it round and get it fitted. Okay guys, so I've just opted for a bird's eye view version of this video um, because you can see more from up there. So I've got the bonnet over there and I'm literally, wait a minute, just line those up. Get those in there. It's another job that's much easier with two people, but I am only one, so... <laughs> Has that gone in over there? Yes. Yes. Okay, we're in. Okay, ready? Moment of glory, moment of truth. Let's just make sure that, that, that. Is that gonna... Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. And this looks, uh, it's all right, it's not too bad here. Yeah, that's not a bad gap actually. It's better than it was. What do you think guys? I haven't put a clear coat on this. Most of you will say, why haven't you put a clear coat on it? Because I can't be bothered. 
um, and I haven't got any clear coat, so it's a, it's a mix of the two. And I've also had really bad experiences with clear coat. Um, that's no reason to not use it, um, but uh, yeah, clear coat and me don't really go together. I'm doing something wrong clearly, and I'll do it at some point, as I will <coughs> the, um, the hard top, but here we are for now. So, let me now, this is the second moment of truth, put this very heavy spare wheel on it. Oh, bloody Nora, why didn't they make them lighter? Down. This is where I scrape all of the new paint. Let's have a look. I did twist it. Oh wait, no. Is that better? Yes, there we go. Right. Where's the other one? Here it is. That goes. What's that hole there? I can't remember what that hole there is. Oh. Anyway, don't know. Let's get that on there. And which way is it now? Up through there, I think, and back through there. Tighten that up. See what I mean? That just doesn't say stay taut when I'm driving, which is a right pain in the ass, because that starts to rattle like that. But there we are, another job jobbed. I am really pleased with that. Um, it looks really cool. Wait a minute, I've got one more thing. No, two more things. Two more things. I've got to put oops, this catch in there, which is pretty pointless to be honest. But and then uh, got to get that pin in there. That's it. And then that on there. And then we are done. Done. Look at that. I am very pleased with that. Let's get this down. Oops. Very cool. Very cool. What's that box doing under there? Get rid of that. Okay, so my camera just died as I was just finishing that uh, bit of footage there, which is perfect timing. So I've got the other phone and just showing you in the daylight. I've, uh, I've just got the, um, the air compressor out and blew off all of the, uh, the dust which was left over from rubbing down the body filler at the front. And it's not a bad match, that paint. I got it from uh, Paddock Spares, because uh, a, a few of you have asked me actually, uh, which paint is it? Um, and I got it from uh, Paddock's, uh, as I say, but I can't see on the website that they do it anymore, which is a bit strange. Um, but it's it's not too bad, not too bad a match. And that's without a clear coat. And anyway, as I said, with that spacer, that looks pretty good that side. Um, it's close, but not rubbing. All of that, that bare aluminium there is from, from when uh, I used to drive it 20 odd years ago and it didn't have this, um, this, uh, this spacer in there, that plastic spacer, it's just sort of scraped on the aluminium there <clears throat> back in the day when I didn't really care. Um, yeah, so that's that's a much better line on this side, on that bonnet you can see in comparison. It's obviously been really hammered, really banged about, uh, yeah, stood and on uh, and so on, really used probably while it was in the army and it's taken its toll, but it looks fine. You know, I paid 200 euros for it um, and 
Yeah, and the main thing is it hasn't got any rust at all. I mean, I was looking at other ones at the time and they were, they were 250, 270, and the frame was was rusted, so, you know, rotten through. So, you know, I'll, I'll put up with the dents and, and, and be happy uh, with a, uh, a rust-free frame. But yes, I'm really pleased with that. It's looking very cool indeed. Very cool indeed. So I'm gonna go for a drive now and uh, take it home, leave the BMW here for, for an hour or so, make sure it's not gonna rain, obviously. And um, yeah, as I say, take it for a drive. I'll see you later. Uh, so I've just popped up to the garage today just to have a look at doing some, maybe some small jobs. Uh, it's really hot today, it's almost 30 degrees. Um, but I thought I'd come up just to see what I can do. Um, after putting the spare wheel on the bonnet the other day, or rather painting the bonnet and, and putting it all on, uh, this is black, uh, or the, uh, what I should mean is the, is the center of the wheel is black on one side and, and limestone on the other. So uh, I knew I had a little bit of the paint left, but it's very, very light. So I don't think there's much in there, but I'm, I'm thinking of like um, thinning it down and, uh, and cleaning that up and, and maybe I can get a coat of uh, limestone or yeah, limestone on the, uh, on the spare wheel. So that's one of the jobs. The other job is um, I got some new, or I got some more uh, gear oil, uh, which means I can do the, um, uh, the axles front and back. Uh, but of course it's not that simple because I decided, or, or the plan was when I was going to redo the oil in the axles, I was going to drain the oil, repack the bearings with the new grease that I've got, high temperature grease, um, and do it all at once. So let's see how we get on. Um, as I say, I might just end up painting, painting the wheel today and that's it, but if I get any further then it's a bonus. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so it looks like I've just about got enough paint to do this one side. Um, but I'm going to tape up the other side as well, so just in case I've got enough to do the other side, I'll, I'll give that a freshen up. Uh, the tyre is actually um, pretty new. I remember my, my dad saying he got it um, as a spare for the MOT in 2000, I think 2000 or something. It was a, a long time ago, but it hasn't really been used and it's in quite good condition. So anyway, that's the best of the, the five that I have uh, for the spare. In the long run, what I would like to do, if I can find one, at a reasonable enough cost is to get another one of these Goodyear Wrangler tires and a um, a Wolf rim, but that's uh, really not essential at the moment. So I'm going to clean this one up. Um, it's I already have cleaned it up before, but it's it's really not that clean to be honest. Um, so yeah, as I say, give this a clean up and then get some paint on it. Okay, so I've got both sides of the wheel pretty, uh, pretty clean now, and now I'm going to tape it up. Okay, so we're going to give it a go. You can see the uh, professionality of my <laughs> setup here. It's dripping a little bit, and uh, I've got a yogurt top for a uh, for a top here. But it's it's been fine in the past, and we'll see how we get on. So that didn't work out very well. So I've got to clean the entire system and then see how we get on. No, no air was coming out the front at all.
Okay, well, as usual, quite a disaster, but um, uh, I've certainly got something on there, and I'm going to move it into the sun now, let it dry off for 15 minutes or so, and then put the last coat on. Okay, guys, so I put a couple of coats on there. Uh, because the paint is so thin, um, I did about, well, two or three, maybe four light coats, um, but now I'm just going to take off all the, uh, the tape and everything and see how it looks. Okay, so uh, that's got that done. Um, it's not too bad. As I say, the paint was pretty thin, so yeah, it, it's not the best. It's not the best finish, and I also didn't tape it up as, as good as I did the, or as well as I did with the uh, the wolf rims on the edges. So there's quite a bit of cleaning up to do, but that's fine. Um, I'll clean that up and then let it dry in the sun and put it back on the bonnet. Okay, so that is the spare wheel back on the bonnet and yeah I guess because it was black before when I was driving it doesn't really show up so I'm guessing when I'm driving it's gonna be a bit more obvious but a bit smarter so um, yeah now I'm pleased with that I, um, I probably won't put the, uh, the strap on until I know it's perfectly dry because actually it's still a bit tacky to the touch but I thought I'd just get it on there but um, yeah I am pretty pleased with that I'm sure some of you might have noticed all this uh, grease spattering on this uh, on this rear wheel here maybe from the uh, from the video I made earlier um, but I thought oh, okay well fair enough um, the uh, the seals going again but then I just went to check the uh, the bolts just to make sure they're all tight and every single one of them was loose like finger loose so obviously when I last did the job and cleaned all this up um, and uh, put it all back together, I didn't tighten the bolts on this flange here. So what I'm gonna do now is go and see if I actually tightened them on the other side as well. I hope I did. Anyway, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clear this, uh, clean this rim up um, and it should probably stay clean now that those bolts are tight. Righto, that's got it, much better. Always remember to tighten up the bolts when you finish the job.